can I hold real estate in my IRA? Well, welcome back. Glad to have you here. Since 1970, I've been involved in real estate. This episode is all about, can I hold real estate in my IRA? And I'm going to go through that in an in-depth answer for you. Now, you're going to learn a pretty amazing world of self-directed IRA accounts. I'm going to say that again, self-directed IRA accounts. Now, self-directed is very important that you understand that part, and I'll review it a couple of times. Now, you're going to learn about a pretty amazing world, okay? Now, real estate training, a lot of it has got a lot of hype. I'm trying to give you as much content as possible here and as many strategies so that you can make big money in real estate. Now, big money is everyone's outcome if they follow the rules. So number one, you need to follow the rules in real estate. All right, I didn't make those rules. The state makes the rules, the federal government makes the rules. So let me give you some insight into that. So I'm gonna show you some of my students and use them as examples and show you how to make all the way up to six figure income. We'll start with some small income, show you how to make some big ones. Now investors make big mistakes, big mistakes at these auctions. So I'm gonna tell you about those at the very end of this video. So stay with me to the end and I'll be right back. Can I hold real estate in my IRA? Well, that's the episode that we're talking about today. So my experience comes from real estate. I've been involved in real estate for about, oh, it seems like forever, 60 years. But folks, I started with single family homes, condominiums. I grew into buying small office buildings. And then from there, I got into giant apartment properties, 100 units, 200 units, 300 units. Sometimes there'd be 16 acres with 300 units. Can you imagine? It took a management team to do that, and it took an administrative team to do that. So I have a lot of experience in real estate. But my favorite is tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. All right, so let's give you some of the rules. And if you learn how to follow these rules, you're going to be okay. So the Congress of the United States simply said, everybody that wants to have a pension plan can have one. Now, that's called a self-directed IRA account. So if you want one of those, you can certainly have one, keeping in mind the word self-directed. Now, why do I say self-directed? Because everyone's going to say those words, but you really want to make sure that you're the one that can direct this IRA. So don't buy it from an insurance man. Don't get one at a bank. If you do that, what you're really going to have, insurance man, you have to put insurance in your IRA. Uh, bank, you have to put bank things in it. So I'm going to teach you how to do it so you can buy these properties for absolute pennies, 10 cents, 20 cents on the dollar at tax defaulted auctions. And then you can let all that growth grow tax free. And wouldn't that be good? Because that's how you're going to get to your retirement quickly. And I'm talking about quickly. All right. Individual retirement accounts are basically something that Congress decided to do a little less than 50 years ago. Now, they're available to anybody that wants one. So you can have a self-directed IRA and it could be a traditional IRA or it could be a Roth IRA. So both are very good, and I won't get, get a chance to give out all the differences, but you need to get one or the other, and you need to start studying what an IRA is, whether it's traditional or whether it's a Roth IRA. All right, now the government also makes the rules for what happens with tax liens and tax deeds. So the local state makes that decision. What decision does the state make? They decide, do they want to confiscate property, or do they want to be lenient and benevolent and do a tax lien certificate? Now, you can invest in either one. So the states that confiscate basically take the property that the property owner hasn't paid tax. They take the property, they confiscate it, and then they sell it at auction for something very close to the back taxes. That's a great way to make money, and I'll give you an example in a minute. The other half of the states, they sell tax lien certificates. Now, if you raise your hand at the auction to buy a tax lien certificate, well, that's fine. They will sell you one, but that does not give you possession of the property. Okay, the people that live in the property will stay there, but you're going to get a certificate that gives you rights in that property. Now, what is the right that you have? Well, you have the right to own it if they don't pay you. So that means if you don't get paid on a tax certificate, you're going to get paid. You're going to get the property without a mortgage. Now, let me say that again. You're going to get the property without a mortgage. However, if you do get paid, you get paid 16%, whatever your money back, and 16%, or maybe 18%. Maybe 24, up to 36%. It's going to depend upon the state. So half of the states sell tax lien certificates. When you buy that certificate, you're buying a rate of return. You are not getting possession of the property unless, as long as they pay. If they don't pay, guess what? You're going to get the property. So that's how a tax lien certificate works. Now, a tax deed is a little bit different. On those states that sell those, 
they are confiscating the property and then they put it back into the market at somewhere around 10 or 20 cents on the dollar. In both cases, there's no mortgage. Tax lien certificate, if you get one, no mortgage. If you buy a tax to follow the property, no mortgage. Now, you're probably wondering a lot of details on this, upgraded course materials and what have you. But if, it, if you have questions, just go below me when I finish. Put in your question, send it to us. We'll send it back. And matter of fact, when I send it back, I'll even send you a nice gift that you'll hear about when we get to the end. All right, so what episode are we in today? We're in the episode that's talking about, can I hold real estate in my IRA, meaning yours, okay? All right, well, yes, you can. And you can either have a basic IRA, which is called a traditional IRA, or you can have a Roth IRA. Now, there's a world of difference between the two of them, but what you do is you want to learn about those. I'm not going to cover it now because I do want to cover how much money you can make, and I think that's more important for this particular video. All right, now, the law recognizes that the IRA is an individual account. So I'm an individual, you're an individual, the Roth IRA is individual. It's an individual entity. And what the county will allow that individual entity to do is to buy a tax lien certificate. The county will also allow that individual entity to buy a property. So now you're seeing that you could have in your IRA account, whether it's traditional or whether it's Roth, you could have your own IRA. Now, once the county has allowed that to happen, you're really in a on your way to retirement a lot faster. Why? Because if it was a Roth IRA, and I'll give you a demonstration in a minute, if it's a Roth IRA, if you buy something in that account, don't ever put any other money in it, just use Roth money, but if the Roth IRA should, should clean the property up, that's a Roth IRA bill. If they fix it up, it's a Roth IRA bill. But when the rent comes in, it goes in the Roth IRA. This is all tax-free money going into that IRA. Okay, if the Roth IRA sells the property, all of the profit, all the profit that it makes is going to go into the IRA. Now, let me give you an example of that. You're going to be shocked, okay? Now, these IRAs are protected by law, and they're protecting you from taxation. So don't take this lightly. Anybody that doesn't know about IRA needs to learn a little bit about it. All right. Don't purchase one from an insurance company, and don't purchase one from a bank. You want a self-directed where you tell the IRA what's actually going to happen. Now, let me give you a quick example. So I've got a client. He has a Roth IRA. He goes to the tax auction. He's able to get a small property, a single family home, for only $4,000. But he doesn't buy it for himself. He has his IRA account buy it. All right, now he gets the house, needs a little tidy up and fix up. So he puts another three or 4000 now closer to 4000 So now he's got a total of $8,000 invested in this account. All right, a few years later, someone wants to buy the property. So he sells the property and he uses an installment sale. In other words, he's going to let the person pay monthly. So he told the person, yes, you can buy the property. It's $1,000 a month for 60 months. Well, folks, that's pretty easy to figure out. $1,000 a month times 60, he's going to get $60,000, and he only invested eight. So he has a $50,000 profit, and there's no tax due because it's a Roth IRA. Now, folks, if you make $50,000 in your job, you're going to give 25 or 35% of it to Uncle Sam, if you made 50000 like he just did in a Roth IRA, you got the idea. So what was the question we were answering? Can you own real estate in your IRA? Well, now I've given you the answer. All right, I'm going to answer a couple of questions before I go. So the question was, can you buy more than one year with a tax certificate? Uh, generally what happens is they'll sell you this year, and then they will ask you uh, when you go to pay for it, would you like to pay next year's? So I would say buy as much as you can because it just solidifies your place with that property and with that tax lien, and it's a high rate of return. So if you're buying a second certificate, let's say it was an 18% certificate, well, now you're going to get two years at that. If the people come in to pay, they're going to have to pay you both years, both years at the 18%. That's really a worthwhile way to do business. And the question is, can we transfer a tax lien certificate? Yes, they're uh, transferable. You can uh, transfer them to your kids, to your family, uh, even to other people. It's a fully transferable certificate. Let's talk about those two big mistakes. You don't want to make these mistakes. So here they are. I'll make it as simple as possible and as easy as possible. Mistake number one that costs newcomers and experienced investors a lot of money. I mean a lot. They lose money at these auctions. And why do they lose money? Because they bid on properties they haven't seen. So mistake number one, don't bid on a property unless you've had boots on the ground, eyes on the property, or you've had someone that you know look at that property. And I mean recently, a few days before the auction. Don't be looking at properties a month and then buying them a month later because 
There could have been a fire. There could have been a hurricane. Could have been a windstorm. I could go on and on. The point is, don't buy properties if you haven't looked at them. Now, that was mistake number one. Now, let's cover mistake number two. Very similar mistake. You go to the auction. You're really excited. Someone beats you out of a property. It spends too much, but you don't get that one. So now you're really determined. And what do you do? You start bidding on properties that are on a list, but you haven't thought about an exit strategy. What's an exit strategy? You know what you're going to sell it for. Don't buy a property unless your exit strategy is in your brain. In other words, you know what you can sell it for. If you don't know what you're going to sell it for, for goodness sake, don't just bid to win. You want to bid because you want to make profit. Those are the two big mistakes. I want you to avoid those. I have a gift for you, and this is a nice gift that you can get started right away. And it's all about tax lien certificates and tax deeds, all on video, so it'll be really easy. And what do I call this gift? I call this gift a quick start to getting started. Just remember the name Quick Start, and when I finish, just go below me, and you can register, and I'll, that'll be my gift to you that'll get you started with tax lien certificates and the big profits in tax-defaulted properties. See you there.